Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know what? Presenting at 3 o'clock is a challenge because either you have people like me who come from overseas and we're just in the middle of jet lag moment, or you have people like you who had a great lunch and just did digesting the lunch. So hopefully it's going to be not boring, not yoga time for you. So my name is Fabrice Moisan. I work at G-Core. Um, and uh, yeah, to give you a bit about my background, I worked for four years at NVIDIA. I launched the cloud computing service for Europe. Then I spent six years at Graphcore. Graphcore was an AI chip company. It's still an AI chip company competing against NVIDIA and has been quite successful in uh, Korea. And now I work for G-Core. G-Core is a next generation of cloud service providers for AI. Just to introduce the subject of today, um, some basics about machine learning, and I'm sure many of you know about that. If you think of machine learning models, you have two steps. First step is what we call training. And if you think of a training model, famous model, um, GPT. GPT, as you all know, was created, developed by OpenAI. Uh, and well, to create the beauty of the application, next step, they took GPT-3, 3.5, and it, takes quite, it took quite a while to train that model, right? Because it's a very, very large model using lots of interesting information coming from Wikipedia, uh, Twitter, emails, etc. And the first GPT model, GPT-2, was actually a 2 billion parameters model, a GPT-3.575, and next gen is uh, GPT-4, is 1.8 trillion parameters. So it's a big model, but if you want to use GPT in real applications, the real application is chat GPT. And chat GPT is much smaller, and th this is the thing that you see as a user. Um, and when you see it as a user, it means that the model who was trained is, has been inferred. That's what we call inference in our world. And inference, um, we call it also production model. So what I'd like to do today is to tell you a bit why um, cloud has become very important, cloud computing has become very important when it comes to not only training the model, but not to bring the application, the jet, chat GPT, closer to the world. And finally, I will tell you why we think that G-Core as a company is going to be very successful in this new world of edge AI in France. So I talked to you about, of course, the, 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 the biggest moment, what they call it, the iPhone moment in, uh, in AI, which is chat GPT. Well, it took less than two months to get people, 100 million uh, people using chat GPT, which is amazing compared to everything we've seen in the past. But as I told you earlier, chat GPT is using a model which is GPT 3.5, and it's been using lots of compute to train the model, to make this model very smart, to make it very accurate when it comes to chat GPT. And the next generation, as I said, is GPT-4, 1.8 trillion parameters. Think about your brain with all these synapses. Yes, any, every time we, they come with a new model, OpenAI, it multiplied by 10, a factor of 10, in terms of compute power. This is why today NVIDIA is very successful to sell its hardware around the world. Um, it's also why some company is not very successful to get access to that technology because there's a big shortage. And, well, if we continue this way, if people want to use applications like ChatGPT, uh, you're going to need lots of new generations of data centers because with, we're talking about lots of power. By 2030, 5% of the power consumption in the world may come from training those large language or gen AI models which is massive. What we're expecting is that by bringing the models close to the users at the edge, it's to, able to be able to reduce that power. First of all, by seeing 
people building new data centers that can deal with large power, but also enable um, the use of comprised um, models, and also the requirement from new chips. And our partner NVIDIA has actually just announced the new L4ES um, uh, chip, which is reduces the power and, and enables the, the model to be brought near the user. Just so as a background with cloud, I'm sure all of you know, um, I've heard about the cloud. Um, well, tell you about my story. Ten years ago, I was NVIDIA. We were just launching cloud GPUs in Europe. And people were just laughing, saying, GPU in the cloud? What do you mean? Well, well what's the story? Of course, at, at the time, the only application which was uh, interesting to people was cloud gaming. Gaming was the basic of everything, but that was very interesting for us as a use case I will describe later, because when you play gaming, you don't want to have any problem with latency. You don't want your game to be hacked, right? And that was the beginning of basically GPUs in the cloud. And, and uh, well, now if you are a developer or a researcher or data scientist working a next generation of, of GPT type of model. Well, of course, as I said before, it's all about scalability. It's deploying the models the quick, as quick as possible. So you need high performance, and only data center can do that. Let me give you another story. When six years ago, I was in the US, uh, set up this company, GraphCore. The first people I talked to were OpenAI. OpenAI, there were 40 people at the time. A small company, and they were training their first generation of GPT model on Google Cloud. They were using TPUs and GPUs, and the question for them was, well, we're going to build this very large model, GPT-2, 2 billion parameters. Should we build our own data centers? Should we buy our own hardware? Or should we go to the cloud? Well, already they thought that if we build a data center, if we buy a home hardware, it's going to cost lots of money. And this thing is going to be obsolete because they were already thinking of GPT-3, say we're going to need more compute, more data centers. So they took the decision to partner with Microsoft Azure at that time. That was a wise decision. Um, also, the thing is, Azure had lots of GPUs available to train the GPT models, GPT-2 models. So it was, you know, they they had the ability with Azure to find the performance they needed with the GPUs, but also to, find, to get the ability to deploy quickly instead of building a data center, instead of buying hardware, set up the infrastructure, etc. And at the end, even if it cost them quite a lot of money to be with Azure, well, it was a good value for their money. Because today, if you are a startup company, like you, you 10 people, you want to develop your model, you don't have the cash to invest in lots of hardware. You just want to work with the cloud. And, and when you train a model, you, you have peak times, you have low time. So that's why cloud has become very interesting for all these startups and the large companies developing large models. The other thing, the benefit from the cloud is that, you know, if you are, if you all use the cloud for your own applications, your own developments, well, you don't have to manually update your software, right? It's done automatically. Well, same thing with the uh, same thing with AI. People use lots of new um, what we call AI frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and you know Google, who's managing TensorFlow, or, or Meta, who's managing PyTorch. They're coming with new upgrades of the framework almost every day. You don't want to manually upgrade your software in your own machines, in your own data center. That's why the cloud is very efficient for that. And as I said earlier, well, if you are someone, a genius, developing those new applications, well, sky is the limit. You don't want to be limited by uh, when you develop the large, super small models by your hardware, whatever. So it's, the cloud is there for that. There's no limitation in capacity. As you know already, we had a, we did the, the 
a presentation with the, the pigs. Sorry, I didn't understand many of them because in Korean, my Korean is very weak, but I was very funny. I think we see lots of new applications coming in with the, with the, with the AI at the edge. Uh, same thing, sky is the limit. I can't tell you tomorrow there's going to be a new application that I don't know about. Uh, what is the trend today is traffic analysis, medical imaging, everything related to computer vision, speech AI, chatbots, translation, of course, chatbots is, is everything related to chat GPT as well. Um, and, and it has to stay, it has to be tomorrow close to the end users, right? Because latency is everything. Um, today we have quite smart chatbots, but tomorrow, you know, customer service assistants, they're all going to be chatbots. And you want them to respond quickly as if they were humans, right? And you want to do that in any language. And you want to do that contextually to think about this. Let me give you an example about what Google did a few weeks ago. They put a person in front of a customer service assistant for 45 minutes, right? They were talking, they were discussing every kind of question that the person was asking. The assistant was able to answer straight away. No, no latency, nothing. After 45 minutes, they told the person, by the way, that was not a human person you had in front of you. That was a personal assistant uh, generated by our engine, our AI engine. This is the kind of revolution this is happening. And of course, this is, you, you can't, if, if the application is running in a data center which is lo located somewhere in the world, well, you don't want this latency. So you need to have this data center sitting somewhere here in Seoul, somewhere in Korea. Uh, finance is one of the key applications that we're seeing, thanks to uh, AGI. Of course, you want to be able to predict the markets quite quickly. And every microseconds that you're losing, basically, as a, as a finance company, you might lose billions. And again, AGI is, is very important. Cybersecurity, of course, um, explained that you know, it, these are the kind of securities, everything, and you want the security to happen at the edge. Uh, and recommendation, search engines becoming more and more um, you know, sophisticated. Microsoft uh, integrating uh, ChatGPT into their uh, search engine. Google are doing the same. And, and personalized uh, shopping, because you know, the, the, the shopping experience is going to be different, and all that will happen at the edge, thanks to the cloud. Um, talking about applications close to the cloud, the applications using your own data, well, um, privacy is everything, is, is a problem. We, I didn't talk about some applications we, that we have with governments, for instance. You don't want your data to be stolen, you, you, in particular when it comes to AI, by anyone. You want them to stay secure. You want them to be close to your environment. In, that's particularly true for healthcare. That's particularly true for finance type of applications. And, well, I'm in Europe, I'm based in Europe, but, er, you know, sovereignty is everything. The country is really worried about healthcare data for patients moving to the U.S. People getting worried about TikTok applications taking the data from uh, children and moving to China. And I'm sure the same is happening in Korea as well. And, and with the cloud, I mean, you, per, you can preserve that security because the data is staying in the closed environment, close by. You don't need to transfer all the data from a place to another. Because once you train the model, as we talked about GPT earlier, your, your final model and your final application just need the end user's data to become even, to perform even better. So that's, that's what the cloud is bringing to, uh, to this new world. Well, this is also something I mentioned earlier, scaling on demand. As you remember, I introduced to you training and inference. Uh, well, again, as we speak at the moment, I'm sure that the OpenAI people are already thinking of GPT-5. I'm sure that the meta people are thinking about the next generation of their Llama models. I'm sure everyone is thinking about something. But they need to find the opportunity to scale um, the, 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 the infrastructure. Because every day they find with new ideas, they need to find new hardware, they need to find um, new infrastructure. Oh, as I said before, 
only the cloud can do that because today you have, well, you can find some capacity somewhere, uh, and, and this is the multi-cloud capabilities that you can go to AWS, you can go to Google, and, and you can manage your, 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 your needs this way. What we see with this new trend of new Gen AI models with the large language models is that it's not a one 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 man shows, uh, uh, process. You have now team collaborating from all over the world. Um, I was impressed to hear that the Llama um, Meta language model was actually developed by 10 teams from different places in the world. Some in the US, different locations in the US, some in France, some even some people in Korea. So it's, it's, it's a team effort, right? And, and you, when you develop a model, a language model, for instance, you go through lots of iterations. And those iterations take time and cost time. By enabling all these researchers and developers, or even people who develop the applications, to work uh, instantly and, and iterate instantly without thinking of, you know, these guys working nine hours away from me, well, this, is, this makes life easy. I mean, it may sound obvious for most of you guests who've been working in, in collaboration with some of, of your colleagues overseas, but you know, without the cloud, the collaborative type of work would never happen, would never be possible. And, and we in the world where AI is moving at speed of light, speed of light is what Jensen calls the, uh, Jensen Wong calls the, uh, the revolution happening in AI. So, hope gave you a, a good idea what the cloud is, is, is important for AI uh, researchers, for developers, and why Edge AI is important. Now I'm going to tell you why we think that G-Core, the European company, is going to be very important in, in that space. Um, so, I don't know, is, do, you have, do we have gamers in this room? Maybe I'm a gamer. Yeah, a gamer. So um, the origin of GQO was a company named Wargaming, uh, World of Tanks. Have you ever played World of Tanks? Do you know this game? Maybe. So it's basically World of Tanks is a game where yeah you 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 can uh, replay the battles in in from the World War One, World War Two using tanks and so on. So it's it's a uh, it's a web-based game, and it's a freemium game. Only a small percentage of people who play are paying, but they're paying lots of money because they want to beat their competitors, right? They want to be the best. And when you have, and, and, and Wargaming is a, actually a $1 billion US dollars uh, company as a revenue. So you can imagine small number of people generating $1 billion. So they want the quality of the game to be great, to be the best. And they don't want the game to be hacked. So what happened is that Wargaming decided to create an infrastructure of cloud around the globe. They put some servers in data centers everywhere, almost. So you had, for instance, you have a, a couple of data centers in Seoul. You have some, in, in, of course, in Europe. Uh, just had a meeting with a company. Um, they have data centers in, in Kazakhstan because what they wanted is the gamers who play in those countries to have, since it's a web-based game, to have no latency problem. So I've paid lots of money to upgrade my game. I want to press on my, on my button. I want, the, I want to win, right? I don't want to have any latency. It's like playing a, a, a soccer football game online, and you kick, and, and, and you know, after a few milliseconds, the, uh, well, the, the, the goal is, 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 is happening, but in the meantime, you lose against your friends. So latency in gaming is everything. The other thing is gaming is played by young people who are super smart, super savvy in, in technology. And what they want, well, they're constantly trying to attack, to hack the game. And uh, we call that DDoS. And, and, and this is important, what, what GCore has been building because the GQ was basically the IT uh, uh, company for Wargaming, is to build that complete cluster of servers where everything was about latency and, and security and, and uh, automatization. Anytime you upgrade, we talked earlier about 
upgrading software, everything happening at the same time in all the, the data centers they have around the world. So by doing so, 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 so Wargaming and, and created that company G-Core that initially was just a, a, a cloud service provider for its game. But then it was approached, G-Core was approached by other gaming companies say, wow, what you've done is absolutely fantastic. We'd like our games to be played by lots of people around the world and with little latency. So they became, after a few years, um, one of the leaders in, in what we call content delivery network, CDN, and, and, and security solutions. And they're actually the number one in that space in Europe at the moment. Um, what they've delivered is, as I said, low latency services and, and, and around the globe, not only for gamers at the beginning, so lots of gaming companies approached and became clients and customers of G-Core, but then you have media companies and you even have social network companies. And I won't share any name today, but some of the most famous social network companies are actually using G-Core's infrastructure. Um, then the vision from the, uh, the, the CEO of, of uh, Andrea Reitenbau, who is actually in the room today, um, of, of, of GECO was that, you know, we've built one of the best CDN network in the world. So we provide um, access to, you know, instant web pages or gaming or media with no latency. The next big thing was AI is going to be the next uh, revolution. Of course, that was two years ago, and, and we, uh, Andrew approached me since I was building AI uh, chips and AI um, infrastructure and said, how about we build a large cluster of AI chips in Europe, which we did. That was a couple of years ago, and now basically this cluster is, is, is here, up and running. And, uh, well, we discussed earlier this year, I was still at Graphcore, this AI chip company, and Andrew said, you know, Fabrice, the next big thing is going to be Edge AI because all this GPT stuff, chat GPT, they're all going to be everywhere, all kind of applications with the customers. And I say, well, that's great. Well, and, say, and I decided to join um, GCO at that time. And, and now what we do with GCO, we, we're building the same way, we're building the same way we build this large network of, of uh, CDN and security uh, workload services. We're basically building AI at the edge. And we're using, well, we tried to use the, the best hardware from the best AI company in the world, NVIDIA. And, uh, well, don't forget, I, I used to work for NVIDIA, but, you know, and, uh, and, and I think they've done something ter terribly great with, uh, not only with hardware, but also the software. And we're going to have, we've already, we, we're doing training. We can train large language models today in our data centers in Luxembourg, but we're going to bring some in, in Korea. We can train like the GPT models using the existing A100, H100 hardware from NVIDIA. But the next step is to deploy, to deploy the lower cost, lower power hardware, which they name L40S, into each of our data center. And it's going to happen next year. So as I told you earlier, why can we do that? Because we are one of the top 10 companies in the world in terms of, of yeah, delivering CDN um, services to, to, to customers. And as you can see here, it's just the beginning. We, we have locations all over the world. Uh, you know what? Gamers are not only located in Europe or Korea or the US. They are everywhere. They are in Africa. These days they are in Latin America. Uh, they are in Indonesia, uh, everywhere. AI is going to be the same thing, right? AI applications will be, uh, you know, the Africa will become the largest territory in terms of population by 2050, 2.5 billion uh, people. They're already using applications like TikTok like crazy. And this is w how we can help because we've been able to build this infrastructure for the last few years. We came from this world of CDN um, delivering low latency, high security, automated performance to the world. And that was in 2014. And at the time, AI was still something that people, researchers, were dreaming about. Um, now we think that the AI revolution is coming to the, the next step. We, you have ChatGPT, everybody's, you know, 
150, 200 million people using ChatGPT. They're using the same, from, same type of models from, uh, from uh, Google, um, from Meta, from Entropic, Inflection AI. It's coming from all over, the, all over the place. But for us, the most important thing after training is deploy. And this is what we're going to do. That's what the next big thing. We, we think that if we meet again next year, we'll, it's going to be a totally different story because the entire enterprise world is going to move to AI and it's going to try to provide all the applications again with low latency, with high level of security to the world very soon. And that's why we're positioning ourselves. And uh, that's why I think it's, it's, it's you know, you saw ChatGPT took the world by surprise in, in less than a quarter. I think Edge AI next year is going to be a totally different story. Our story with uh, history with, uh, with Korea. Well, you know, Korea, I've been to Korea for so many years. Um, I'm, I'm actually, guess what, I'm importing my own kimchi. I buy it on Amazon. So, uh, so I, I love the food, also love, I love the talking about paradise and, and kind of type of, of, of applications and, uh, and uh, Parasite being my best movie ever. So we think Korea is a great country to work for g because Korea is a country of export. When I say country of export, who is the number one smartphone company in the world? Well, this is Samsung. But Samsung is not only selling a smartphone to the world, they're selling white goods. They're, tell, they're selling TVs, they're selling um, fridge, they're selling washing machines. And in each of these devices, you have an engine that they call Bixby. So Bixby is like for Apple Siri, it's for um, Amazon Alexa. And, and well, Bixby will need to be deployed globally very quickly linked to all of applications. Bixby is like going to do, it's doing voice recognition today, but maybe not perfect. It's like my Siri on, 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 the, on Apple. But soon enough, you'll see, they will have to deploy globally. <coughs> they don't have the infrastructure today to do that. They might use AWS, but you know, they, AWS might be expensive. Uh, in, in countries like Kazakhstan, I was talking about today in Palestine, AWS have no data center. We do have data centers. Um, this is a great example, Samsung Hyundai. Hyundai, you know, electric vehicle is going to be massive, right? We already know that. And Tesla is the most popular company in the world. Um, they call Tesla the smartphone on wheels because what people love with Tesla is that it's 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 nice car. It's got a great autonomy for with the uh, the sales. But you have all these funny applications you can I can play my music on Spotify I can have video call on, uh, in Tesla well Hyundai Kia has one of the largest exporters of EV uh, vehicles in the world anytime they will need to have an upgrade for their software they will need to do that via the cloud and you know it's going to have voice recognition that there's going to be lots of sensors in the car figuring out if you're tired if you're happy if you whatever this is going to happen to the cloud because every every time a car will pass along a, a like maybe a 5G base station, well, your data will be processed into the uh, into an AI model. So we're proud that you know we to be in Korea. We have a team now of six people. Um, we started only this year. We just announced a very strategic partnership with the uh, NHN Cloud, which is one of the largest cloud. Uh, companies in uh, in Korea, they have data cen centers as well, and and they love the idea of partnering with the G Core, which is not a hyperscaler, not a AWS, not Azure, not uh, not um, Google Cloud, and we bring innovation. We bring this idea of yeah CDN applications, low latency, uh, security, and now AGI, and we have global coverage, so we can work together. And stay tuned because very soon. Many new announcements are going to be made in, uh, from the Korea team. So we're so excited to be here today. So as a summary, um, you know, hopefully you understood why you know, the cloud is important for AI, why it's been important for AI, why it's important to train, but why it's going to be ev even more important in, in the future for all these 
applications requiring low latency, high security. We call it AJI. Um, some call it inference, but at the end, same thing. And, and G Core today, as a European company, we really proud to be here um, to share with you this this future of, of, of AI, AJI in the cloud. Thank you very much.